Hey, this is Eddie Hale, and I want to show you how to draw the top of the soda can from Lesson 7 in my Adobe Illustrator class. Start with an ellipse, and you fill it with a gradient. I fill it with a gradient that goes from red to black. But watch this. If you fill a gradient, i got to make this 100%. If you fill a gradient from a color to black, it turns gray in the middle. So on the black side, you have to add whatever your primary color is. Mine is red, so I'm going to add magenta and yellow. And now the gradient goes from red to a darker red instead of going from gray to black. That's the first trick. Then you start um, layering these ellipses on here. I have my Smart Guides on, Command-U. I draw a perfect circle from the center out, Shift-Option. This first circle is filled with white, and it is stroked with none. And if I look at the example here, it starts out white, and then I've got all these different layers of ellipses, a dark gray ellipse to suggest a shadow on this side, and then another highlight ellipse here to suggest that the can is coming up. I am going to make you do all those ellipses, but I can tell you this. I, I draw another concentric circle here, a perfect circle, and this one's going to be a dark gray. And then I copy Command-C, and I hit Command-F, for paste in front, and then I um, I make this a lighter circle, something like that, and I use the black arrow and scrunch it over to the right, and that leaves that shadow right there that suggests the inside of this rim. And then I could copy and paste in front again, Command C, Command V, and I will make it white, I believe, is the next one, and I scrunch it over from this side. Is that what I'm going for? Yeah, to reveal a little bit of grayness like the inside of the rim over on this side. So you try that. Stack those up. Keep hitting copy, paste in front. See if you can get the stacking just right. I'm going to cheat. I prepared one before. So here's the one you and I are going to work on right now. Yeah. The tough part of this lesson, I think, is the um this pop top lid which is hollow in the middle. The way I did it, I want to make it symmetric. So I'm going to start out here. I start with a pen tool. I'm going to draw the outer shape. I start by dragging out like this. And then I, what does that thing look like? Okay. <laughs> then I come down here and I drag here to describe this sort of squarish, roundish corner. And I come down here to finish it off. And hopefully my smart guides are going to help me line up with that point up there. Because I want to end in a perfectly vertical line right here. And I just draw half of it. And I would take the white arrow now, and I would go in and fine tune this thing. Until I'm happy with the shape. I'm happy with the shape. Now I'm happy with it. Now I have to draw the, um, the recesses in here, the parts that will be cut out, cut, cut out of it. So I take the pen tool again, and I'm going to drag straight horizontally here and around here. I keep forgetting what this thing looks like. End up right on this horizontal line. I'm going to deselect that line by holding my Apple key and clicking. It's still there. It's just the same color. Starting on this midpoint again, I'm going to drag perfectly horizontally. I hold the shift key to make that happen. And then I'm going to make this shape here. Drag straight down here. Drag a little loop here. Come back up, drag straight up. And straight horizontally again to describe that shape. So I could make these two white. But in the end, I will make them um, transparent. Wow, I need that darker so I can see it. I will make these transparent. Now I'm going to go in with my white arrow. I'm going to pause the tape while I adjust these shapes. You do the same. Adjust your shapes. Get them just right. All right, for the sake of sanity, I'm going to call this good enough right here. The next trick is to flip this thing over. So I'm going to move it over here. 
Any way you can flip it over will work, but I'm going to use the Reflect tool hidden under the Rotate tool over here. I go to the Reflect tool. I have all of these parts selected. I'm going to turn on my Smart Guides. I'm going to Option click on one of these middle anchor points. If I hold the Option key, when I click, I get this Reflect tool dialog box, and I can tell it to flip over the vertical axis and to flip a copy. And there, now I have my copy. But it's not see-through. I want it to be see-through. So I need to do some trickery. I need to select these top two anchor points. Right now they're separate anchor points. Oops. I'm going to select them by drawing a little marquee around them, and then I'm going to join them. Object, Path, Join. Let's remember that command J. There, now those two are joined. They just moved in front of some of the other shapes. I'm going to close up this end down here because these are also two separate anchor points. I'm going to hit Command J, Command J. Those become one anchor point now. If I grab it and move it, you'll see that it's one anchor point. I'm going to send this to back. Shift Command, left bracket sends that to back. Now I need to join these. Very difficult to marquee those in when this thing is here because I'll keep moving it when I try to marquee. Undo. So I'm going to go, I'm going to select this and go to Object Lock Selection. And now I can draw my little marquee around here and this thing is locked down. I'm going to hit Command J again to make that one anchor point. Draw a little marquee around this, oops. Draw a little marquee around this anchor point down here. You have to have just two anchor points, Command J. Draw a little marquee around this one down here. Command J to join it. And finally around this pair of anchor points down here. Command J. Now they're all joined. I'm going to unlock this. Object, unlock all. Now it's all selectable and movable. I'm going to move it over here and show you that it's still not see-through. To make it see-through, I select all the parts, and this is the amazing thing that you're supposed to learn today. You go to Compound Path Make. Object, Compound Path Make. And that sort of punches a hole in this thing. It makes these parts see-through. I can move it over here now. It's way too big. I'll scale it down, holding the Shift key, of course, to make it about the right size, to be a pop-top lid. It's pretty big. I keep switching back between my handout and Illustrator, hopefully not moving too fast. I'm going to switch to the handout again. Okay, so it's light colored and there's a there's a shadow behind it. So I'm going to select this and make it a light color. And then to make it stand out more, what I did was I put a little shadow behind it. Um, I'm going to do this. I'm going to hit Command C and Command B. Edit Paste in Back. So now there's one behind there. I'm going, going to use the keyboard arrows on my keyboard to nudge it over to the right and then fill it with a darker gray, and you'll see that indeed there is a darker gray shape back there now. I did something tricky though, because the shadow gets bigger as it moves up this way. So I must have rotated it a little bit. Can I select it now? Yeah, I'm going to rotate it out just a little bit up there so that the shadow gets a little bigger so the pop top looks like it's moving away from the can. Finally, I draw this rivet on here. It also has a tiny little drop shadow. And then I draw this shape right here. This uh, The shape of the opening is just a really thin gray stroke. And then this shape here, the little, almost looks like ram horns. Those are, um, that's a dark gray shape. Again, I drew it so that it gets thinner out here at its tip and then thicker here. I drew half of it and then flipped it over the center using that option reflect trick I just showed you. I might let you finish that up on your own. Thanks for watching.